my name is Ken Hobson. I thought today we'd paint some palm trees. So let's get started. Uh, I've got a couple of references that I've taken. Uh, these were down in uh, Naples, Florida a few years ago. So I'm not going to follow these exactly, but this gives me the shapes. And I'll play with this and I'll play with the background. And the more I kind of look at this one, I, I really like that color, sort of that salmon color. Uh, it's on a building. I don't want a building in there, but that could be our sky. So let's just let's just play with this. I got uh, about four or five brushes I'm going to use today. One of them is going to be my large brush. I'm going to use possibly a couple round brushes. These are all sable brushes, although there are great synthetics out there. My script brush and also a dagger brush. I'm not sure I'll use the script brush, but I will use the dagger brush. And I'm going to lay in some of my strokes. I'll use this uh, mop brush. It's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill by Creative Mark. Uh, it's a great, it's my favorite mop brush of all of them. It's a great brush. Uh, it doesn't have a green tip though. I painted those on there so if a student wants to borrow them, I can locate them at the end of a workshop. So let's get started. All right, so like I said, I like that color back there. I'm not going to pencil anything in. I think with these, the looseness of these palm trees, I think I can just start start painting them. I always have a test sheet between my palette and my painting. That way I can test my colors and see if it's what I want. So what I've got here, I've got lemon yellow. I added some cadmium orange in there, but I'm going to push it more to the lemon yellow, I think, at first. Yeah, I kind of like that. Lemon yellow with a little bit of cadmium orange. Again, I'm just going to be very bold with this. I said I was going to use this larger brush. Let's get in there with this larger brush. That way I can get in there quick. Everything stays wet. I don't have any areas drying. I've got this tape down to the table, so hopefully it, uh, the paper doesn't buckle up on me. That's more cadmium orange, and I put a little bit of a quinacridone violet with it also. That's the importance of using a big brush is that you can keep the whole thing wet and, and uh, it'll all work together. It'll blend together nicely. I'm going to run that all the way across the bottom here. I'm going to just take a paper towel and mop up this excess here so it doesn't become a problem. I think I want that to be a, a little more on the red side. So I'm going to add some cadmium red medium to this. There, I like that better. That's good. Okay, I had a little sap green, a little quinacridone violet. I want that to go fairly dark at the very bottom. But let's just uh, play with this right now. I think I'd like to have, see a little movement up in here. I think I'll just take some uh, my little spray bottle. Just mist it a little bit. That'll dilute it a little bit. Also, if I tip it a little more, um, it'll start running down. And a lot of times that gives you some nice, interesting blossoms in here. It's starting to do right there. So I'm taking some cadmium red, some quinacridone violet, and I'm going to put the complement, which is green. I'm going to put some of this sap green in here. So it's a combination of some complements. Yeah, I like that. That's good. A lot of times I'll take my brush, uh, especially my small ones, and I'll push the brush up, get some nice textures. And you got to remember, watercolor is going to dry about 25% lighter. It looks great when it's wet, but uh, you'll be very surprised that when it dries that you're going to wish you'd, you'd made it darker. So 
So more sap green. I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to it to, to darken it. Now this looks pretty dark, but it, uh, <clears throat> it's not going to be if I don't uh, add a lot more pigment to it. More quinacridone violet right in this area. I'm going to tip this a little more, <clears throat> add a little more water to it. See if I can get some of this yellow to run down into here. I can also tip it the other way if I want this to move to the top. I've got this setting on the, on the top of a three ring binder. Uh, it makes a great tabletop easel. Um, you don't need to uh, go out and invest in expensive easels. I think I'd like to cool this off a little more. I might even try some thalo green, which is a very, very intense green. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this a little bit. I'm going to wet this area again. I'd like to see some of the greens come up into here. So let's just kind of miss this. And that's mostly a phthalo green. Yeah, see, this is, this is quite a bit lighter now than it was when it was wet. Um, so I'm going to go back up and revisit that. Uh, a lot of times people who don't paint in watercolors think that uh, once you put it down, you're stuck with it. You can't make any changes. Um, but you can. You just, you just have to know how to go about it. So I'm going to go back to my lemon yellow, um, my orange, and a touch of cadmium red and a touch, just a touch of quinacridone violet. I'm gonna fan this brush out too. Looks very abstract. It can be a little nervous when you aren't sure yet until you've done it enough. Um, but. Uh, There's plenty enough time for detail. So let's, we don't want to start out with small brushes. You want to start big brushes and stay with them as long as you can. Just going to soften some edges here. I don't need a hard edge up there. Okay. I think what I'm going to do just in here, I'm going to do a little splatter. Again, this looks pretty dark, but it's still going to be too light when it dries. So, quinacridone violet, some ultramarine blue. I'm even going to put some phthalo green in there with that. Lean it more towards the red side, though.
Again, I've got the brush fanned out. Where it's starting to dry, I can get a little bit of texture of trees in there. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's dry that and see uh, see where we are. Now, before this dries completely in the bottom, I'm going to just take some clear water and just see what kind of textures we can get in here. You actually see the lighter values underneath. Right there especially, you can see that. All right, let's go back to drying. Splatter some more water. It's still a little wet, and so it's, the water will separate the color right there. And I, I want that just a little bit of information in there. As you can see, it's pretty dry here. That because you're able to see the texture of the hairs of the brush. So this is a good time if you want to put a little information, uh, just you know, trees or bushes in the foreground. Um, just don't get too carried away. That's not our focal point, but we're giving a little information down there just so it's not just kind of a plain panel, with nothing happening at all on it. I'm going to go a little lighter up in here, like there's trees in the background. Keep the foreground pretty dark and just put some distant trees or bushes in the back. Okay, it's still wet down in here, but I'm going to... Uh, you know, just throw a tree, a tree up in this area so I can stay out of that as long as I don't get my hand into it. Um, so let's just locate this tree. And I want a little action in this tree. I don't want it to just be standing straight up. So let's, uh, let's kind of bring it up into that area somewhere. Maybe start it here. Okay, and then maybe a smaller one that starts back in here. I've got my dark colors. I've got the phthalo green in it. I've got the quinacridone violet in it. I'm going to push it to the red side a little bit here at the start. I'm going to put a number of different colors up in here, though. I'm going to lo locate the main mass right up in this area. Same with this one. Let's put that in. Push this into the greens here, phthalo green. This is a number uh, four round brush. Don't slow down and try to make all these strokes perfect. Um, it's better to stay fresh and loose with it. So we've got reds, we've got greens up in that area. Make that just a little bit thicker right there without getting too thick.
Took some sap green with a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow in it. I'm going to go to my small script brush. I'm resting my fingers on the paper. It's dry here. That way I can make sure that my strokes are nice and thin. Go back to my phthalo green. Just a light touch so the strokes are nice and thin. Put a smaller one over on the left side. Let's just try right there. I'm going to take a flat brush right now and uh, give some relief in here by pulling out some of the color. I use my uh, dagger brush right now and I'm going to put just a little more information right in here something close to us um, I usually hold it out on the end I don't want to have too much control over it I, um, it's better if it stays loose and you get some unexpected strokes but that's okay it's better than have everything so tight and controlled uh, it just loses its freshness I'm just looking at to see what, what else does it need. Does it need anything? Let's dry it. Oh, by the way, the paper I'm working on, um, I try different papers all the time, but this one I'm using today is uh, Arteza. Uh, it's uh, 
9 by 12, 140 pound cold press. And it works pretty good. They also make a 100% rag version, which I haven't purchased yet, but uh, I'm assuming that would be better. The paper will stay wet longer, which means it gives you more time to uh, work with it. But this seems to be pretty good. Now, it has kind of a strong texture in it, but I, I kind of like that. So I'm gonna take some clear water. This is pretty dry now. Let's just take some clear water and splatter it on here and, and see what we get. Let it soak in, soften the paint a little bit. And I'm pushing down hard and away. If you just push straight down, it doesn't do much. But if you push hard and away, it lifts the paint out of the wet spots. Again, I don't want it too busy because we, we don't want to draw the eye down here too much. But this is the focal point right here. I'll put some birds flying across. And they're very simple. I didn't want them to be too strong, too detailed. And if they seem a little dark, what I can do while it's still wet, I can just come in and Gently knock it back a little bit. Okay. And the old rule is instead of two of them or four of them, let's, we'll put in three of them. Now I decide where do I want to place it? I don't want to put it here because that puts them all equally distant and on the same plane. We don't want that. I'm going to place it right here. I've got a little bit of red paint on my palette yet here. Let's just play with some of that. Now it's got a lot of water in it, so it's real looks pretty red right now, but when that dries, it's just gonna be just probably hardly noticeable. Now, uh, without a lot of experience, you're going to think uh, that, boy, I wish that was lighter in there, but I, I, it's, I can't do it. It's already down. I can't play with it. But I'm looking at this and thinking it's a little heavier than I wanted right in here. I'm going to take this brush, water. Well, you can hear me scrubbing a little bit on it. Tap it out. Get a little cleaner, fresher color in there. Okay, what I've done is I've taken some uh, titanium white and a little bit of lemon yellow and a little bit of the phthalo green just to break this up in here a little bit. Just a couple strokes, just to uh, give some relief in that area. Right, let's dry it and take the uh, tape off, see what we got. As I was taking off the tape, I added a little titanium white to the phthalo green and splattered it on top, just to give a little more information in there. I hope this has been helpful. It's a lot of fun to do. Don't necessarily feel like you're stuck uh, following your reference exactly. I mean, this is what I use as a guide. I didn't make them straight. I didn't uh, necessarily keep them in silhouette like this is. And a very, very important thing is your values. 
a lot of times uh, you have a tendency to not go as dark as you need to go and the painting just sits there. It doesn't have that punch that you really need. So a, a value scale is a crucial thing to have until you get comfortable with, with your values. Um, it's a good guide to use. So I'm going really, really light, almost white, but I'm also pushing it way down to my darks, almost to black right in this range. So it's a good idea to put this up to your reference. You sometimes think, well, that looks like it's pretty dark. You put this up to it and you realize, no, it's maybe it's down in this range. So values, extremely important. Thanks for watching.